कोडिंग सिखाओ पर्सनल फाइनेंस सिखाओ ये सिखाओ वो सिखाओ बच्चा लोग बहुत पढ़ता है लुक एट द स्कूल बैग दे सो हैवी व्हाई इज दिस सो मच एडिक्टेड लेट देम गो आउट लेट देम प्ले मीन बोथ कैन हैपन एट द सेम टाइम लाइक यार क्या हो गया ये जनरेशन को यार जूता खरीदने के लिए लोग इतना क्रेज है हाय गाइस वेलकम टू धन पॉडकास्ट टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट विद अस समवन हु हैज बीन द ओजी टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टॉक्स इक्विटी इन्वेस्टिंग रियल एस्टेट एंड अ लॉट मोर He's the author of two popular books. He is the host of India's leading podcast, Paisa Vaisa, something that I have personally, you know, grown up listening to. So it feels an honor to host him. Welcome to the show, Anupam sir. We are so grateful you took out some time for us today. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you for having me. It's you know, it feels great to be in the place in the office of the studio of a brand that I personally admire. PJ was on our podcast quite some time ago. So thank you for having me. Really nice to be here. And thanks for listening to my podcast. It's always good to meet a listener. Yeah. you know let's start from the beginning hmm. you completed your ca like in back in 1998 then worked across companies i think the last role that you worked on was vp at barclays yeah. and then moved you know to working independently hosting your own podcast so walk us through that journey hmm. uh, i think careers are never linear at least for me i i wish it was but it was not and my whole thing was inspired by harshad mehta okay everything said and done i don't think when i was in college i could have said that i want to do a podcast and i want to write a book so when i was in college was when harshad mehta was there and my whole thing was influenced by that and i know at least a few other fund managers who still remember that era that kind of just pushed them to be and i was, and I was a commerce student so i entered the stock markets and i was there all the way till 2013 as an analyst a sell side analyst as it is called working sectors and themes and all that 2013 is when i think i took a break and said i want to get into full time writing about stories of india you know but within again brokerages so then i worked uh, for another 5 or 6 years with sorab so i think you know when you ask me that question i think i was always driven by storytelling mm. and that took me a while to get there like 1998 to 2013 i would have spent that much time obviously slogging working hard and there were long hours there's no um, and i had fun fun doing it but it's only at that point of time that i took a step back and said now what do i want to do mm. so that's when the whole journey of writing um first reports um with sorab then books and then the podcast of course is you know i don't know if amit doshi is listening to it but shout out to the ibm guys they they did all the they still do all the heavy lifting um, and the podcast is all credit to them that's the story Awesome. So you know you have seen multiple cycles. Like you know up until two thousand thirteen, you were actively in the markets. Two thousand eight happened. For a lot of us folks, right, we have not seen that cycle. Yeah. We've only seen a bull run. So how do you think we should navigate that? Uh, given that you know you've seen so many cycles. I think you guys have handled one navigation really well. The COVID drama. Yeah. I think that has uh, it's amazing, right? Because. you had the market fall 40% and then we went all the way up and now where where we are flows never stop on the contrary that the period of the lockdown gave people enough time to think learn educate themselves and had a stayed at that point of time i remember myself thinking there is just a five days lok sab aayega chala jayega that kind of stuff the sap book is 16000 crores and the people here are thinking that a mutual fund is the first way to start the investment what better could that be that option was not avail- available to me in 1992 when ashar mehta was there it was available to me in 2000 i wouldn't say in 2001 when ketan parikh scam happened and the tech bubble burst it was available in in, in 2008 but my decision making process and this generation decision making process thankfully has been much better so i think you guys are doing a very good job and i think that if you could start your investment journey when the market is down 40% mm. you are taking care of it I mean, you know, you you are you are already taken care of. If you look at how the Nifty has moved from then to today, we went at least three or four times when it has fallen ten to eleven yeah. percent. And I'm talking Nifty because it's a broadly understood index. Um, but the behavior hasn't changed. SIPs have continued. Investments have continued. Conversations have continued. I think we are doing good. Eh? Doing really good. So you know, markets in early two thousands versus mm. markets now. Mm. What do you think has changed, and what do you think has not changed? Uh, I don't get that question a lot. Very good question. So I think what's not changed is emotion and sentiment. That can never change. Never change. You know, what's a bull market then is a bull market now. Um, what has not changed is the urge to beat the market. 
you know whether you are an institutional investor or whether you are a retail investor so those two things have not changed will not change what has changed obviously is the type of stocks that work then and that are working now what has changed is the behavior people have accepted that equities are for the long term and if and if stock prices go up they will also fall we need to be patient what has changed sips i've been talking about them what has changed significantly passive passive has come mm-hmm. up in a very big way like people just assume that the first step would be to open an sip in an index fund which to me is like the smartest decision yeah. for anyone who's new to tech so what's not changed what's changed uh so recently world cup happened right and uh, we were all seeing the stats for the concurrent viewers on certain streaming apps and i was surprised that there are almost 5 to 7 cr people who are watching it live yeah. it means there are tech savvy people and i also happened to look at the unique mutual fund investors mm. uh, only 3 crores so it baffles me that if you're tech savvy enough to you know get access to that get started with those platforms so why do you think you know despite all that investor awareness funds and everything the mutual fund investors in india are still very very low compared to the potential that we have what can be done better Yep. nice question dream 11 has got 8 crore users by the way uh, if not more i think that this is a very long term process that has that will take its own time and that's mm-hmm. what the history of other countries also tell us in the mature countries and i think that the awareness process has become the decision making will happen in its own time i don't think that we can um, really push this remember that even these numbers that we've come to have come to after almost 7 years of efforts mm. from the regulator from amfi from a very dedicated um effort put in by the industry by the by, by the product manufacturers to push mutual funds mm. okay stocks i think have stocks are a more recent phenomenon mm. but they've also come in and i think that when people realize that this is a legit avenue for them to invest for the future is when this process will come i think it's a slow process and it was helped also a lot by the lockdown which is when people had it had that window of time to consider the finances it will take its time but i don't think you know i don't think we are that worse off ki saying there are if 7 crore people can watch a cricket match why can't more people invest in a mutual fund yeah it takes time we are getting there so now you know i see a lot of products which are being built around diy investing mm. for gen z's and millennials but i personally feel that uh, if you have a substantial amount of money or you know uh, after the bare minimum has been done you should leave it to an expert to manage your money that's what i think what do you think about it should people manage their own money or give it to you know experts to manage it Yeah, this is a question that I've tried to answer in my book, The Wisest Owl. Also, I just here again, I feel it's a life cycle question. When you start mm-hmm. at the age of whatever, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, you obviously can't hire an advisor, mm-hmm. okay, because mm-hmm. it's too expensive, etc., etc. And the guests that I've had on my show also seem to agree with this point of view that you start with the basic stuff. Of course, please have your insurance in place. Yeah. That's one thing that I don't get why people don't. They're, they're very happy to talk about which which, which SIP is good. But when I ask them what about your life insurance and health insurance, then the conversation goes somewhere else. Anyway, um, so I think that I look at it this way: that if you're someone who's not in the markets, if if you're someone who does not do full time investing, mm. you've got a full time job. The maximum investment you should be doing is in yourself, mm. and let the investments take care of themselves in an area which you can understand. Yeah. which let you have a peaceful uh, sleep at night so start with index funds sips asset allocation and once you feel that you've got the confidence to go through a few ups and downs of the market then take you know then you start to move on you look at concepts like asset allocation and diversification you look at expanding into passives etc etc 10 years down the line when you're 35 you know you've you've hopefully you've got a few promotions in your job you're doing well you've got a family your needs change you will probably buy a house you'll be looking at your kids education and if you are a double income family your finances tend to become a little bit more complex your goals also tend to change at that point of time maybe you want to look at an advisor mm-hmm. okay again as you move forward you know every 10 or 15 years you got to reassess your requirements and you need to have goals goals are very important that's one more thing that has changed i think from my time to now in my time there was no goal you just mm-hmm. work you spend you enjoy life and that's it now goals are there you know like you got a 30 year working career 
you've got kids, you've got family, you've got goals, you've got investments. That's when an advisor really comes in. I think at some point of time, it makes sense to at least get an opinion. No, I feel it's very important to have, go to an expert because then you don't have that stress of managing your money or yeah. what how have you deployed it correctly or not might as well leave it to an expert and do something else with that time yeah i think so here's the thing obviously and a, a, a lot of people like to make the comparison of a doctor and an advisor and i feel that it's you know, the only way where it's different is that a doctor does stuff which probably you never studied in your life <laughs> but an advisor is someone where you need to have a very basic knowledge of all the products where yeah, you are of course okay yes. So you need to have at least one level of due diligence already done about your products and then you go to an advisor and let him help you out. Okay? Take, take his advice but please always be in charge of your finances, especially for women. That's yeah. a topic which, you know, hopefully um, I've tried my best and I know that I've not done a good enough job at Pesa Vesa. I feel that's a conversation that really needs to be had. Yeah. Women really, really should have and I've, again, I've had this conversation with advisors also like previously they started off, they would only call the man of the house. Mm. Now they insist that we want the spouse also. And this is not just marriage. It's also partners. Yeah. You don't need to be married. You know, So there need to be conversations need to be had between two people who live a life together. I think because fundamentally women are so good at saving. Even if you see a homemaker, right? Who is not uh, working, just yeah. focusing full time on raising a family. Whatever money she is getting from the partner to run the house and all. Even from that, if they are able to save a certain amount, I'm sure a lot more can be done. If they just invest that no, I, money. I, mean, I think when you say that women are great savers, I think that, you know, that's probably the good part and the surface. I think that... In women's lives, and again, this is from the conversations I've had with people, there is much less linearity and predictability as there is for men. Mm. Okay, and I can give you lots of examples out here. If a man comes from outside to stay in Bombay, the way that he chooses a place for rent is very different from a woman doing that. Definitely. Okay, so that's one thing. A lot of people again miss that. It's called a pink tax. I just learned, I think I had Hansi on our show long ago, and she told me there's a pink tax. Decisions change, okay. And uh, there's a lot of nuance out there. I won't want to go into it out here because then we'll go on talking. Then as a woman grows up, the decisions that she faces are not the same as the man faces. Okay. Leaving a career for a child, etc. Et there's also burnout. Why do people think men only have burnout? Women have burnout. Yeah. Why can't they take a break? Okay. So that also works in them, works for them. Spending 10 to 15 years to raise your child and then wanting to mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. I never face that. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of stuff happening out there yeah. that I think. I be. think better, maybe a biased opinion, but again, a lot more planning, in fact, is required for a woman because marriage break, probably child break, those are the times when you need better finances. Yeah. As you and said, right, it's not linear and some of the toughest decisions to make, you know, and those are the times when you would need money, actually. And women face the worst of it. And I've had so many stories. Um, I remember for my book, one story that an advisor told me was about how there was this family, middle ages, husband passed away suddenly, wife didn't know what to do and he's a businessman. Mm -hmm. You know, she has to step in. So that kind of effort mm -hmm. that happens. I just did a recording yesterday with someone from insurance who told me that a lot of women don't even know that they're the nominee in their husband's policy. You know, so yeah. stuff, um, stuff like that, uh, divorce, um, mm -hmm. single mother. So there are so many situations that women face and apparently there are not enough people who want to talk and have these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, this is a conversation that can go on for quite yeah. some time. So a follow up on my previous question, right? So a lot of products around helping millennials and Gen Z's invest better. Mm. Uh, I think there is a sizable market for helping people who are 50 plus and retired That's have a large enough corpus uh. but don't know what to do with their money. A trend that I am seeing is a lot of them want to come into the markets into trading okay good thing but they don't know how to right so the skill is not there uh -huh. of course you might take some time to build that skill but what do you think can be done better product wise again and just to you know help them invest that corpus better it's like your life saving like literally yeah. you know there i would want an advisor to come in and help out there. Mm -hmm. i would not trust someone who's yeah. has a pot of money which by the way is his accumulated savings for a very long period of yeah. time yeah. to take rash decisions and you know uh, put into the, I think that insurance has some good stuff out there, especially mm. for people who are looking at retirement planning, mm. accumulation phase, distribution phase, etc., etc. I think um, 
I don't think there are many products out there that are going to help someone in terms of how to invest once you've got that pot of money. I think mm. the process needs to start at education. Like, okay, this is your life cycle. You've got whatever, 40, 50 years left. There are people who take, feel, live to 100 years. Uh, so this is your remaining life. These are your expenses. This is your corpus. This is how much you can spend. This is what you cannot spend. Mm. Okay, so I think the first level of education starts there. Honestly, after that, these are also people who worked a lot. Dunya dekha hai. Matlab, yeah. aisa nahi ki they are, you know, they are like uh, people half their age. Hopefully, you know, they'll take smart decisions. But I, it's an area where advocacy and education needs to happen for sure. Yeah. Once that happens, I think the products will probably follow. But I think that even the existing products today, like mutual funds who have SWPs, STPs and stuff like that, can also work well for them. So I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, one more teething question, you know. I, I see people on Twitter like, Ye meko school mein kyun nahi padhaya? Why was this personal finance no, basic? Part two, part two, part two. Yeah, and I feel maybe some of it is not needed, uh, you know. Uh, like young adults who have uh, recently started earning and cribbing about taxes and all. We've been a part of it, of course. So, oh, do you think personal finance should be taught in school? And if yes, uh, what? I don't agree with all this. I mean, is and I'm a parent myself, and I keep on hearing. So there are two contradictory things happening mm-hmm. out here. Huh? One says that I coding, sikhao, personal finance, sikhao, ye sikhao, wo sikhao, mm-hmm. blah blah blah, because apparently our schools are not good enough on that. And second says that is, bacha log bhot padta hai. Look at the school bags; they are so heavy. Why is there so much education? Mm-hmm. Let them go out. Let them play. I mean, both can't happen at the same time. Huh? Mm-hmm. See, our curriculum is a work in progress. Now, what needs to be taught and what, what does not need to be taught, I believe that our politicians are doing a reasonably good job. Otherwise, half of the CEOs in the US would not be from India. Okay, So, something we are doing right. Having said that, I think that if you understand mathematics, I think you are sorted. Yeah. If you can understand the very basics of mathematics and what's left is product level knowledge. Okay. Now, what else needs to be taught in school, Shraddha? You tell me. First aid should be taught in school. CPR should be taught in school. Of course, it should, na? Who knows whether it's uh, this. So, I think that question is a little bit dicey. Mm. Should it be taught? I think basics can definitely be taught. Yeah. But I think for any investor, at least the one that I've spoken to, most of the experience comes from whatever they have gone through in life. And experience kind of teaches you a lot of things that education cannot. Yeah. And that works true for a lot of other things in life also. So there's no necessity ki because you were taught personal finance in school, you'll be awesome in life. Yes. Aisa kuch hai nahi. Ko mil gaya, if you're able to learn something, it's great. It, it's not something that leaves me, you know. I'm a <laughs> I'm a father of a 15-year-old. I don't know whether he's watching this or not. I don't think he's interested in mutual funds yeah. as of now, at least. So what I'm trying to say is this: sikhao, sikhao, no problem. A little bit of knowledge is always good. But don't go mad after it. How much yeah. will kids learn in life? Exactly. That's what I think. Okay, so you know, you have been very vocal about real estate prices in Mumbai and other cities. So let's talk a bit about real estate, you know, buying a property. Yeah. Now it has already been established that buying a house is an emotional decision. But what part of it people don't understand? Like, you know, people are irrational. You are going to make choices, you know, certain choices which might sound irrational to other people who are financial advisors, experts. But what part of it people don't understand? Like buying a house versus renting one. I think that what they don't understand is that one is a convenience and one becomes a necessity. In a sense that buying your own house, there might be some points of your point, some points of time in your life where it will look like, you know, you really should do it. And to me, I've seen typically people who are in their late 30s, 40s, 50, you know, 40 years, 40 years ish, have a family, have kids, want to be rooted in one place. Mm. Okay, and are very clear that they, this is where they're going to spend the rest of their life. Mm. I think those are the people, and of course, who've got accumulated savings. Yeah. For them, if they buy house, it makes sense. Okay, what people do not get is that renting comes with a lot of convenience. Mm. There's no doubt about it. The fact that you're you're getting an asset at 2% for something that someone has to pay 8% interest rate and rental yield. That is a convenience that buying cannot do. Okay, but that flexibility has a great place in a life. And I've done renting, buying. I mean, I've, I've been on both sides of the equation. I think there's space for both in a person's life. And I don't think one should get swayed away by societal pressures. Mm-hmm. Okay, because the worst thing that you want to do, the absolute worst thing that you want to do is land up 
in a home loan that you can't repay or that becomes a burden on you see because i think buying a house at least in metro cities is something that will always stretch you mm. always you know make you rack your brain in terms mm. of how do i fund that whether i have the money for the emis and it's a nice extreme emotional thing like you go to see a sample flat mm. you're like this is it i worked all my life and i deserve this house and i do this and i do that and then when you go into your excel file you find are yaar thoda yaar investments bechna padega ye karna padega that is always something that no insta reel or tiktok video can tell you but it's only when you press the button that you land up in that that you realize that okay this is how a home loan works mm. and i don't think i've heard to many people most of people that i know own their homes complain you know they crib about it a lot at the start yeah. but once they settle down in their house having your own house not having a landlord and knowing that there is a predictability in something that you do gives a comfort that can never be captured in an excel file i mean i, I think these are the aspects that don't get spoken about too much mm. definitely so uh, so you know i'm sure you had a chance to speak to a lot of people i mean we've done like 400 episodes on paisa waisa yeah. tell us the craziest personal finance story <laughs> i they oh boy okay that that came out of nowhere that'll take some time for me to prepare for oh, but i think so we like to do year end episodes on very different different topics so like last year we had the super kicks guy talking about sneakers i mean why mm-hmm. not let's do sneakers i mean one part of money that we ignore is just enjoying because mm-hmm. money is the result and again a lot of people don't get this that they think money is a destination is this it's not that money is probably the only un- universal measure of your success so why why shouldn't you enjoy that yeah. we had the sneakers guy and you know and he's talking about how people line up outside stores to buy yeezys and i'm like yaar kya ho gaya ye generation ko yaar jooto khareedne ke liye log itna craze hai but okay then i talk to my kid and he talks about jordan so i get that we did one on mental health which is again something that a lot of people don't get you know it's not a bizarre story or a freakish story but it's just that money has a lot of impact on the way you think Definitely. okay and i get that a lot of as you age the whole what will society say etc etc um this 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 year's christmas episode is i can you know as a special to your listeners i can say that it's with cyrus brocha it is going to be absolutely wild it is something that i did not prepare for at all uh, but aside from all of these specials i think the two products that always make me wonder how people look at their finances is insurance and credit cards Mm. Aside from all this stuff about investing in F and O and stocks and mutual funds, I think insurance is somewhere where people, you know, sometimes take decisions that they don't probably get. It could be not taking life insurance, and I'm like, why would you do that? Um, taking too much insurance and having preconceived ideas about how insurance works. Health insurance, unfortunately, again, a, you know, an area where people should know more. And of course, credit cards. Like, why? Kitna lo credit card ka reward. I mean, people spend more time trying to find the best credit card than they exactly. would do in anything else. I mean, what what's happening out here? Why are people doing this? Why has this become such a hot topic? So I don't get that. Yeah, but take it. If that's what people feel gives them the high, then so be it. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's yeah, that's it. I, crazy stories that some of my colleagues and all that multiple credit cards trying to optimize for things and I'm like for what joy? I But don't get that. I, I just don't, don't get, get that. I mean, if they think that that ten minutes or half an hour is better spent in their job or doing something or going for a workout rather than spending on what's the best thing out there, take it. But I think you know it's that whole pleasure of getting something for free. Free, yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what. To each his own. To each his own. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, you know. I'm sure you must have interacted with a lot of people who've been investing in the markets for mm. quite some time. Again, some crazy entrepreneurs out there, and for your book also, you mentioned yeah. that you're meeting yeah, yeah, yeah. some people. Uh, tell us about them, you know. Entrepreneurship, honestly, you know, I I wish PJ was here, but I think it's a very difficult path that has changed a lot over the last at, at least thirty, forty years. Thankfully, for the generation that is here now. uh having startups having venture capital having private equity is also a good thing because that gives them an avenue to raise money but i think you know there's one thing that i totally get the way that a salaried employee looks at risk versus the way at how an entrepreneur looks at risk is something that is fundamentally different a lot of people don't talk about it because obviously an entrepreneur gets it in a certain way and a salaried guy gets it in a certain way at the same time i don't believe one is better than the other 
विच इज अ डिबेट दैट आई बिलीव योर जेन जी एंड मिलेनियल है मेरे को स्टार्टअप करने का मेरे को नौकरी नहीं करने का नौकरी क्यों करेगा ओके and i remember i was doing something uh, an episode i think for mangalam at uh, cnbc he asked me that you know what's your lesson or i said ranbir kapoor i said what ranbir kapoor as you look at the movies he's done okay he did that rocket singh salesman of the year then he did tamasha then he did something in the middle that i've uh, temporarily ye jawani hai yeah. hai diwani and now he did to juti mein makka uska life cycle dekho na jara 2 minute pe just see see where he started he started in a full time job had to deal with the politics then went into mental health troubles with tamasha yeah. okay then went into this my life is my passion to mereko photographer banne ka hai girlfriend to bichara matlab end mein mil gaya thankfully and now he's come to two duty mein mukar where he's driving two two mercedes and all that and there's so much to learn out there that when you're a salaried guy there is a lot of value in the hard work you put in and if that gets you your money every day or every month month after month year after year that's a good thing it gives you stability and stability is always a good thing you should use that to save up to build a strong financial position okay and then do whatever you want okay being an entrepreneur will always be a struggle okay mm-hmm. unless of course you've got inherited wealth which by the way also is tough because mm-hmm. tomorrow any any guy can come up and beat you at your business so i think those are the stories that stay behind with me when it comes to entrepreneurs when it comes to people who set up businesses versus people you know who are salaried employees and I, i think that's a debate that a lot of it a lot of the nuance gets missed yeah. so now your transition right from working in barclays to then moving like independent consulting then paisa waisa happened and uh, you, you authored two books right so how was that transition like and why importantly why did you move to like you know doing your own thing so i think one was that i had pretty much had it with the uh, with the those 12 hour a day kind kind of thing but more importantly i think that um I knew that I wanted to go into content, whether it is writing, whether it is podcast or whatever. That point of time, podcast didn't exist, or at least I didn't know that um, they would become a thing. So, what I wanted to do could not be done in the existing structure at that point of time. Mm. Today, I believe it can in some way, which is a good thing. Mm. So, I thought that I need to just move out and look at doing this independently. I was very lucky that I had Saurabh when he was at his previous employers, where he gave me that room to sit. and have my own hours and become a consultant yeah. so i think the consultant model did not exist the way it does today and that's the reason why i left mm-hmm. now obviously when i look back at it 10 years from now and if my kid and my wife are here they would also have their own perspective i think this leaving your job to do something that you like is never going to be easy you know it 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 will always depend on when you are doing it at what point you are you are doing it um could i have waited i probably could have because that would have helped me to improve you know boost my financial position but uh, other than that these are things that can't be timed um i don't know you know I, the journey I, i would say in terms of what i wanted to do has 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 done yeah. well i would say it's come along in the way that i wanted to do say when i look at it 10 years ago the money part of course i could not predict at that point of time mm. so i'm just glad that at least some investment decision that i took gave me that window of freedom yeah. that i have now because other than that then so i don't think i would be in a very bad you know it would be pretty wild of me to take that decision I, and i would not want anybody to do that i would say that every time that anybody is thinking of this leaving what you do to do mm. something fancy mm. thoda aaram se ek excel file kholo numbers dalo thoda dekho kya hai kya nahi hai and then it's not easy and please always have a plan b please 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 always have a plan b age will not give you that comfort that it does at 25 or 35 that you won't have that comfort later on so i think that's what i've learned definitely so you know paisa paisa started early 2017 yeah, uh, yeah. personal finance content and content creation then versus now you know how, how do you think it has changed it's done really well i think that you know that the when when i see the enthusiasm the energy with which a lot of content creators bring in a message and the popularity that it has received i think that's great i think it's the awareness that has been created by these call them influencers or call it whatever at absolutely zero cost to the consumer mm-hmm. obviously the person who's making it has a cost okay yeah. the fact that they've done that that is the great part about this if 10 people can get aware of how a financial product works after watching maybe a 10 second or a 30 second video which is free of cost i think that's great that did not exist before to do that you would have to read a notebook ask your ca go to a website etc etc now you don't need to do that 
you just google and you are you're done because someone out there is spending a very large amount of time and you would know because you are yeah. in into this that 10 seconder takes a lot of time if someone is doing it for you i think that's a great thing obviously see you can't control that content there'll mm-hmm. obviously be some extremes and you know some stuff yeah. that happens which i personally would not um, look at really well uh, but also the content creator i get that they have to monetize so it's thoda ho jata hai but i think consumers are getting smarter Hmm, they can definitely. make out which is the tp content which is the serious content what they like so i think it's good i think it's awesome i think sebi has also finally woken up now and figured ki thoda isko control karne ka it's, it's getting out of hand i think it's a it's a maturity curve which yeah. is which will take its own time in sorting out yeah. but, but i think a great step from regulators of course. also yeah yeah 100% yeah. i agree with that so one last question let's say we have one crore of god person oh my god how would you invest it <laughs> depends what how how old i am and what my goals are yeah. i mean you know if i am someone uh, who's i don't know in his 30s single and wants to set up his own startup maybe 10 years from now i would just take a large part of that put it into a 7 8% kind of a fixed income mutual fund leave the rest to equity look at it 10 years later see how it's a classic 60 40 um allocation if i am someone <laughs> who's in my mid 30s who's got a wife and kid i would just buy a house with that okay or help buy a house because i don't know which part of india you can buy a house for 1 crore uh, if i'm someone who's retiring i'd obviously put it into a bank fd and just live off the interest 1 crore is actually a very small me <laughs> every retirement calculator shows that you need to have 12 crores to 10 crores yeah, and all yeah. that but i think that i think mota moti the 60 40 allocation has been proven to do reasonably well 60 equity 40 debt tweak it as per your requirements obviously and see below that i don't want to get into what type of equity you should invest or what type of debt you should invest that's a decision that i think people are smart yeah. enough to make now awesome so let's end this with one advice from you Pray on Pray. personal finance like this is like you know follow it like the bible basically for people if you want to do well uh-huh. what would that be so i think first and foremost learn learn and learn learn everything that you can about personal finance product learn yourself give yourself freedom to make mistakes and mm. please the only advice i have is invest in yourself is up stock market or sab chalte rehta hai but if you set upon a certain goal in life then please achieve those goals your investments and all are on the side they are a result of your effort in real life not the investments are not your journey the investments are not your destination if every day you wake up looking at where is the nifty going what is the market doing what's my portfolio doing to tumhara salary ke liye kaun kaam karega sir so I, i would always say that you know please invest in yourself live a good life live a healthy life that's very mm. important that's not up for compromise and be a sub stock market ka chalte rahe <laughs> let it figure out on its own okay awesome thank you so much thank you for, for having me shardha thank you for having me show. and i yeah. hope that the listeners viewers learn something from that thank you thank you